Hey, thank you, everybody. We will get on with it. So welcome to the show. And it is a show. Um, delighted, as always, to have API on. Um, they've just got such a great broad range of, of products. So welcome to you, Lewis. And obviously, Ross, welcome to you once again, friend of the show. Um, and actually, I thought, actually, for a change, I would just ask, it wasn't that long. Two launches come to mind. We did Sheldon Court and um, Swan Courtyard. Uh, Ross, how, how are they doing? Just as a matter of interest. Sheldon Court um, was the first one we did um, a while ago. So that's sold out. Uh, that was a very, very good project for us. Um, completely sold out. We've got all of the mortgages through, valuations through. Um, we're down to the last couple of completions out of about 75% of the project. And we've got all the lettings done in an average of 10 days. So that one has been a great success, Chris. Oh, that's great. 10 days. That, yep. I mean, what would you say your norm would be? I, I, I always sort of stick to about 28, but, you no, know, it's it, been cautious. It, it, we're picking these projects in, in, in an area of good demand, but we've just got the, the, the back end and the, um, the lettings pro process sorted. So we're actually actively sourcing tenants and vetting tenants and doing that side of the game a good two, three weeks ahead of time. So by the time the units are completing, we've already got a line of tenants ready to view it. So we're, um, we're cutting those times down as much as we can. And Swan, I like Swan Courtyard. How's that doing? Swan Courtyard's been been great. We've um, we've only launched that in the last two months. We're around sixty percent sold now of the buy to let allocation. We've obviously held a uh, a number of apartments for owner occupiers and the um, the help to buy scheme. So that's gone really really well. Construction's on schedule, and um, we're way ahead of uh, way ahead of uh, time in sales as well. So yeah, that one's that one's going very very well. Well, maybe we'll touch on some of the other developments like 55 that we did not that long ago and some of the other stuff. But uh, Lewis, I stole your thunder. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Good, uh, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning or good evening, depending on where we are in the world. It's um, a pleasure to be invited back, myself and Ross. I really enjoyed the, uh, the, the webinars we do with Holborn. Um, Today, we're going to focus on two of our new developments that we've, uh, that we've launched. One is in Solihull. The second one is a Zone 2 London project. Um, just before we go into it, I'm going to explain quickly a little bit about who, uh, who API are um, and sort of the, the processes that we follow and how we can assist in the, in the process of not only sourcing a property, but assisting you throughout the property cycle as well. Um, Obviously, we've been working with Holborn now for a number of years. You know, everyone knows who API are, so I'm not going to sort of bore everyone to death with the, the history about us. Um, however, what I will say is, you know, we are a global company. We've got a global footprint, offices in six locations, which you can see on the screen there. We've recently just bolstered our team even further. We've employed um, more account managers to help with the, the sales and the new business process um, in various different countries, as well as the sales progression and the mortgage progression side of things as well. So really offering the full turnkey solution. We're not just the, the you know, the client facing side of things um, to get the sale in. We're helping out with every step of the process, which is equally as important. Um, just to, to briefly run through the end-to-end -end solution. Again, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail. Everyone understands sort of how we help out. Um, you know, but we do the market research. And I think credit to Ross and his team, um, this webinar is probably evidence of that. You know, we don't just stick to the normal um, regions and the areas that we've stuck to previously, i.e. Birmingham and the north. You know, we are looking at other areas where there's great investment opportunity, which that's why we are now launching uh, a brand new Zone 2 development today, which I'll go over. So obviously we've got the market research um, to analyze where we're going to go into the development, to sourcing of the projects, the investment advice with myself, and the other account managers do across the globe. Um, sales progression, so once the, once the unit is reserved, we then manage that from a post-sales progression perspective. We've got the legal side of things, you know, working with our solicitors on a daily basis. Um, we provide con quarterly construction updates, so if you do have clients that are buying things off plan, um, and you know, whether that be a six, 12, or 18 month build, you know, they know what's going on. We like to keep our clients and our investors up to date so they can see the progression of the build. Um, back end, we then got the mortgage support. Like I said, we've just employed um, we've just employed a new mortgage progression officer that will take care of all of that. That will work hand in hand with Holborn and their clients. Obviously, the completion phase, 
equally as important as the as the original sale, um, and then through the lettings and management side of it as well. So, like Ross said, you know, for Sheldon Court, we're averaging tenants in ten days. Some areas are actually finding tenants um, a lot less than that as well. So that's been hugely successful with us. And obviously, the the last point that we can offer on is, you know, if your client do, does purchase something from us today, five, ten, fifteen years down the line, we do have that um, resale team as well to assist in in moving the asset on. Um, Again, we, we've touched on quite a lot of why invest in property, but for anyone that's new uh, to sort of the property world or, or is new on the call for the first time, um, why invest in property? So property is different to other assets in that you get an income both ways. So you get a monthly income from a, a yield perspective, okay, but your asset also grows over time with what we call capital appreciation. Um, there's not many different investments that can actually do both. Um, so property is a great way to, to get exposure to that. Um, generally, we work on a medium to long-term wealth generation, so, you know, holding for a minimum of 10 years upwards to really see the, uh, the, the advantages and, and, and maximize the returns on that perspective. Um, property obviously being a tangible asset, you know, it's hedged against inflation. It, it really bounces out any portfolio. So if someone's, you know, got exposure to, to equities or direct stocks, or crypto, which is the new craze at the moment, property can always act as that sort of safe, um, safe asset class that you know you sort of understand where it's going to go. Um, so, so essentially, low risk to any portfolio. Um, again, if, if clients or if any consultants on the call at the moment do want sort of more in-depth knowledge, knowledge on why invest in property, reach out to myself uh, or Chris or, or the other account managers globally. Uh, and we can go through that in more detail, okay? Um, just, a, just a little bit of an update. Again, we went through this graph in the last webinar when we spoke about why property is so attractive at the moment. Um, you can see here, dating back to 1983, we've got the actual house price and then the trend. Um, you can see currently that the trend is actually above where the house prices are, which is showing us, you know, it's on that upward trajectory um, and we've got so much more room for growth um, so that's why property has been extremely popular, um, certainly for us over the last, um, you, you know, nine months where we're significantly up on last year. Um, and that's been a number of reasons, but obviously the way the property market's moved has been, um, has been extremely helpful. Um, following on from that, you can see here that the annual change um, you know, we're, we're positively up again so far year to date, showing from August 5.6% up on a national average. Um, obviously, different areas of the country um, will, will be higher, but, you know, when we balance it out, you know, property is rose 5.6% this year on average. Um, if you look at the stats at the end of last year, the beginning of this year, you know, the likes of uh, Savills and JLL, you know, the, the big sort of companies that are doing all the data analysis and research, um, we're forecasting a flat year. So the fact that we're 5.6% up year to date just shows how well the market is moving and shows why it continues to be such a success and a popular investment choice for our investors globally. You, you'll have noticed from the, the why invest in property screen, one of the points that we touched on was um, the ability to leverage. Now, again, we've gone through the leveraging slide a number of times. Um, I don't want to bore people with, with why leveraging is important. Um, but again, just to give you a brief overview into how you can use it to your advantage from an investment perspective. If you've got brother A who's buying in cash, okay, they're putting all their equity into an investment. So the return they make is significantly smaller than if they were to leverage up and borrow from the bank. When you're leveraging up, you're putting down a third of what you'd put down if it was total equity. So your return on capital is significantly more. That's why we can see at the bottom of the screen when we're taking into account um, growth over the five year period, as well as rental income. When you're looking at an equity purchase as opposed to leveraging up, it's nearly half, 54% versus 92%. Um, so we always try and work on a leverage basis because one, it's not your money, it's the bank's money. So it's, it's cheap to loan at the moment, but then the return on capital is significantly higher. Um, at the end of the day, when we're looking at investment property, we sort of need to forget it's an actual property and purely look at the financials. You know, if you're putting down X, you want to get you to Y, 
here's how we're going to do that. And it's worth mentioning uh, this, that um, we, we call it other people's money, it's bank money, other people's money, and, and that's how it works, OPM. Um, but also, and we are pushing this a lot, and I, I know you two guys will agree with this, if you've got the opportunity and you're unsure, go for a pre-mortgage. Um, you can get a, a pre-mortgage by speaking to the mortgage broker, Darren, um, and, and just gives you that peace of mind that even if it is 18 months or a year off plan, that um, there is a bank out there for you. Um, we, we're stressing that more and more. It just cuts out the headache and the stress. I hope you agree, Lewis. No, no, absolutely. And again, I think, you know, one of, not necessarily an objection, but maybe always that thought in the back of someone's mind was, you know, do I want to pay the money and then not be able to, to purchase anything? So the fact that we can do a decision in principle sort of eases, um, you know, eases the, the worries that some clients or, or investors may have um, so no, and like you said, we, we get the we get the DIP back or the decision of principal back, you know, within two to three days, um, which then gives a good sort of um, steady foot going forward. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So uh, Solihull, that's Birmingham, isn't it, Ross? Is that your part of the world uh, from your accent? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very, very, very nice part of the world, just south of Birmingham. Um, probably one of the nicest uh, areas uh, in the UK, very green. We'll come on to that when I get the map up on the screen so everyone can have a good look at exactly where it is. Uh, do you want to run through some points, Lewis, on the um, on the investment side of Solihull? Yes, exactly. So so like Ross touched on then, Chris, you know, it's, it's one of the most desirable um, hotspots in the UK, Solihull. It's a... It's probably the most sought after postcode, certainly in the Midlands. It's the most affluent area of the Midlands. Um, and that's due to abundance of reasons. You know, it's, it's interconnected and enterprising. And really, it's a town bristling with opportunities. You know, we're a, a nine minute train ride away from Birmingham. Um, you're close to the M42 motorway, um, a two minute drive from, from our development that we're going to go into. Um, and, you know, when we talk about superbly connected, we, we always think about location, 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 as, as cliche as it may sound. Um, I think what's important to know, certainly from the, the development perspective, we're five miles from Birmingham Airport, you know, which you can access hundreds of different locations globally. Um, you're a two minute walk to the Solihull train station. And like I mentioned earlier, it's a nine minute journey then into Birmingham city centre. Um, obviously one of the main drivers behind the growth in, in the Midlands is the HS2 that is um, that's due to complete in the next um, next five or so years. Um, the HS2 interchange station um, is situated um, you know ten minutes away from the Solihull development, and that will be part of a new public transport interchange that's serving Solihull and the West Midlands. That's going to link you to further further up north, i.e. Uh, Manchester, but also to London in under forty minutes. Um, you know, again, when we've looked at economics and basic demand and supply, you know, when you can get to point A and point B in such a short period of time, it's naturally attractive for people to want to be based in different areas, um, as opposed to having to do a long commute from where they currently are. Um, the, the, the HS2, like I said, it's going to be built near Solly Hall and the NEC in the West Midlands. That will become the first railway station globally to achieve what's called the BREEAM Outstanding Certification, um, which is a measure of sustainability for new and refurbished buildings, um, which actually puts it in the top 1% of buildings in the UK for eco-friendly credentials. So again, when you know a lot of people now talk about ESG and sustainable investing, when we talk about eco-friendly, HS2 is a huge tick. Um, is a huge thing from that perspective. Um, obviously being connected then to, to Birmingham City Centre within nine minutes, then opens up all the doors for all your um, clients and tenants who are previously based in Birmingham City Centre. You know, when we look at city centres across the, across the UK, the prices are continually going up from a rental perspective and an appreciation perspective. Some people may not want to pay the increased rents, and it almost creates that ripple effect. You know, we talk about Birmingham and the, the big city plan and the, you know, the Smithfield regen plan, and always creating that uh, ripple effect and driving tenants sort of outwards and investors outwards of the city centre. Solihull is superbly connected, like I put on the screen, to ensure that clients can get from point A to B. 
um, you know, in, in minimal time. I tell you what, I'm going to ask a question. Questions just come in, um, so please do keep coming in, bring them in. Being the, the centre, right in the middle of, of England, um, Birmingham, it must be a good place for people to invest if they've got children who may be going to university in a few years' time. Because it is very, uh, I'm not saying that a student's obviously going to commute down to London every day, but it's probably a good one to look at if you have got children that, that are going to do that. And even if you just invest thinking, well, hopefully my child will get to a university, it will be near Birmingham. But if not, you sell it in two, three, five years' time anyway, and then buy the one in York or, or Southampton or wherever they may be. We do yeah, well, absolutely. That, that's, that sort of brings on to the next point about first class education. You know, in Solihull alone, um, you've got two senior schools, uh, sorry, two um, senior schools that are ranked as outstanding by Ofsted. Um, and you've got 10 junior schools which are ranked as um, outstanding or good by Ofsted as well. So from an education perspective, Solihull is a huge tick when looking at families. Um, but then when we move on to Birmingham, which, like I said, is only nine minutes away, you can see my stat at the bottom of the screen. There's 75,000 students that are in Birmingham across a number of different universities, um, you know, which are renowned for its education. But I think what's very important to note about Birmingham is the, the student retention. So 40% of students, once they've graduated, actually remain within the city or the surrounding areas. Um, you know, once they've left university and, you know, when we come back to basic economics and supply and demand, you know, where are these students going to live? I'm not saying these students are necessarily going to live in the developments that we're showcasing today, but it, like I said, it creates a knock-on effect, it creates that ripple effect. When students leave university, the likelihood is they're not going to have enough money to put down as a deposit to buy a property. And that famous footballers good. live there in Solihull as well. That's the most important thing, isn't it? And you've got people from Aston Villa and Birmingham City. They, that's, that's the posh area of town. That's where they all live. You've, that's you've where got, you live, Ross. You've got some roads around there, Chris, in, in, towards uh, Solihull and Knoll and these little pockets of areas just outside the, the, the town centre there. And you, you could be anywhere in, in, in the UK. It's green, really open, lots of golf courses, huge houses. There's, there is a lot of money there. Yeah, well... Okay, Lewis, sorry, I interrupted you as usual. No, no, it's fine. Um, you know, when we talk about economic growth, um, you know, we talk about what's going to drive the economy, what's going to make it sustainable. Um, so we talk about Birmingham and Sally Hall on a separate note. You know, Birmingham's home to um, Bly Valley Business Park. Over 8,000 8, businesses are based in Sully Hall, um, including the likes of Jaguar Land Rover and Toyota. Um, that Toyota was actually one of the, the huge investment reasons behind um, our previous Solihull um, project that we did, which was phase one of this development, went on to phase three. Um, but, you know, Toyota and Jaguar Land Rover are massively recruiting within the area. And again, when you've got a huge recruitment drive, that only adds to a demand to an already undersupplied market. You can see the stat on the screen there, there's a shortfall of 39,000 properties. Um, in Birmingham and the surrounding areas. And um, again, when there's an undersupply and over demand, just like any sort of investment, Chris, the, the price goes one way. Um, so that's why we've seen you know, huge success in the last development that we, um, that we did in Broad Oaks. And that's why so far with the, the latest phase, we've continued to see that, um, that success continue. Um, from a yield perspective, you know, we're averaging yields around 5.5% which again is more than what the interest rates are from the bank. So all of our clients are looking at cash flow positive at a minimum cash flow neutral investments. So they're not having to put any money in to, uh, to the mortgage on a monthly basis. You know, the yields are covering the outgoings, which again is an additional positive. Thanks, Lewis. That's great. Um, and then it's a good time to say when you're talking about mortgages, we're, we're usually talking about 65, 70%. But again, as Lewis said, let's get them dipped if you're unsure. So let's get, can we get to the sexy bit now? Let's have a look at the properties. <laughs> oh, the properties, right. Sorry. Yeah, that's why you're there. Forgot <laughs> to tell you. <laughs> right, guys, this is a cracker today. This is the phase three of Broad Oaks in Solly Hull. As you can see from the image on screen, a very, very nice looking building. Just before we reel into the next, I'll just give you a quick bit of background. We've just finished sales in the phase one 
which is to the right of this development. Development's completed, completed on time. Mortgages came in on target and the apartments have been renting out on or above estimates. So you can see from the building that's on screen, it's made up of three parts. You've got block A, the parts on the left-hand side of five floors. Block B is the low rise level in the middle, followed by obviously block C to the right-hand side. Um, it's a conversion, but it's a part conversion because they've made extensions on both um, left, right, and the middle. So the building's got larger. It will essentially look on delivery like a new build. So it's been really popular. Um, we've got uh, four projects previous to this with the same developer under our belts. Um, again, completed products, mortgages have been fine, rental demands have been great. And of course, Holborn have been involved. We've done the uh, Coventry project, we've done one in Ashford, we've done a previous one in Birmingham, and we've also done one in Nottingham. So it's a developer we know well, the trust is there. Uh, we know that the confidence levels there on delivery of quality products. And um, we know sales are going to go well on this one. So as Lewis has said, Solihull, hugely popular area. If you just roll into the next one, please. Here we go. So you can see from the phase three, there's 96 apartments in the phase three, which, as I said, is made up over three blocks. Its entirety is 96 apartments. Mortgage ability wise, we've already run this through with your mortgage partner and had back lots of uh, green ticks and thumbs up. So the banks are very, very keen for this product and location. Um, we've, we've assisted it obviously with the mortgage ability terms. So 250 year lease, 0.1% on the ground rent. And for those that don't know, if you're buying a property at 200,000, the ground rent shouldn't exceed 200 pounds. That's the 0.1%. Uh, healthy gross and net yields, um, a solid um, build warranty in place, a 10 year build warranty in place. And again, we've seen phase one delivered to a really high standard. And obviously phase three is being built now. It'll be ready next year. So the standard will be the same or better. The extension levels are gonna be finished to a slightly higher standard because obviously they're new. So get in early on the top floors, the, first, the top two floors. Um, but yeah, great product. It's gonna be ready. Is that top floor, is that top floor penthouse um, with garden? There's balconies, the there's balconies, Bal but within the development, which I'll show you the master plan as we go through, there's a lot of communal area there as well. Um, there's also some townhouses towards the back that we'll touch on in a second. All oh, right. Um, but yeah, developer, great developer. We've worked with them numerous times, really confident. The lenders like them, which is important for everyone on the call. Um, and yeah, they deliver on time. Next one, please, Luke. Okay, Chris, as you know, I love a map. So this gives yeah, you a very good of idea one. of the project. You can see the shape at the bottom of the screen that is the whole Broad Oaks master plan. You'll get a bit more color on that in a second, but essentially the bit nearest the bottom of the screen, there's nine townhouses at the bottom there. The center of that site is actually phase one that we've previously just sold. And the bit closest to the top is the large phase three. Now with the map on screen, you can see just above the project and to the right hand side Solihull train station now I've been there I do the exercise and I've walked it it is literally a few minute walk I know we've put five minutes on the brochure but you if you walked there backwards slowly it would take you five minutes it's a very very easy walk up to the uh, train station and again we did the train into uh, the city centre and it's actually an eight minute train we, we shaved a minute off that being on the train so the connectivity there is, is unbelievable. And if, I think you'll notice from screen as well, lots of green for a change. Three quarters of Solihull is green belt. Okay, so the supply demand balance on new build is hugely in favor of, an, of a purchaser because there's not lots of competitive property going to be coming into the market or flooding into the market to reduce your, um, to reduce your ability to rent it at a good level quickly and of course to be able to get, gain capital appreciation on your property. So you'll notice heavily around there lots of green, lots of detached houses directly above the project 12 o'clock, Waitrose and John Lewis, always good neighbours to have in a town centre um, and it is a very very nice town centre, really really oldie world if you've ever been there, lots of Tudor wobbly buildings, cobbled streets, a very very nice feel to the place and you you can tell when you're there it's an affluent part of the world it's um you just need to be there and have a bit of a bit of lunch in one of the coffee shops and see some of the cars driving around it's a nice place to be so 
tenants are going to be there long term. Um, for those of you um, Asia bound, if you've got um, BNO clients that are keen to get somewhere that is actually a very, very nice place to settle and live, I would be looking into these sort of options as well around Solihull. So it's a great part of the world, Chris. Next one, please, Lou. Any no noise from the train, Ross, when you were there? Was I've it been a slow there, train? So just, just, to, just to give you a bit of a, a full, full picture on that, if you're right next to a train station, trains can only be coming in to stop, collect passengers and pull away again. There's no trains hurtling through Solihull station at 80 miles an hour. It's a stop. So a train at even 200 metres away has to be going at a walking pace to come into and dock at a station. So the answer on that is no. There, there, there's, no, there's no noise as if you've got an intercity train hurtling past your property. No, it isn't. All you'd see it as is a benefit for accessibility. Yeah, good. And just as Lewis touched on um, accessibility, you can see the logo for Broad Oaks on the screen there. Um, you're surrounded by, by, by motorways, but they're, they're, they're obviously far enough away and you've got lots of green belt and lovely areas in between. But you're a two, three minute drive to the M42, which then links you almost like a... a an inner circular road links you to the m6 m5 and m40 so connectivity wise to the airports uh all of the large business hubs you've got the the Blythe business park and birmingham business park i believe over fifteen thousand companies between the two not to mention all the automotive industry there jaguar land rover just to name a few roy's rolls royce have got headquarters there as well so it, it's just a very very nice part of the world it can latch on and benefit from the education uh, the higher education, a lot of um, large employment of major companies, uh, close to airports, HS2 interchanges, but not too close. You're away and you're in the, a nice green, comfortable pocket, low rise, not lots of high buildings and construction and cranes around. It, it's a green belt area. So what you see is what you get currently there at the moment, and it's unlikely to change drastically. So when you're looking at a supply demand balance for an owner having a property in Solihull, you have the advantage. You're not going to be swamped with um, competitive property in years to come. So there's the master plan on screen. So if that was to be upside down, as I said, looking at the original map, the phase two on the right hand side, that is the parcel where the townhouses are. The centre, which we've just finished selling out and it's complete, which is phase one. And then obviously to the left is what we are going to be launching today is the phase three. So the phase three, although by metres, is closer to the town centre and to the station, but just by metres. And important to note, while you're looking at the screen, of the 89 apartments, every apartment has a parking space. So it's a really, really accessible product, whether you can't afford the two bed or the one bed, there's no stipulations of only two or three beds carry the parking spaces, one but one bed stone. Every apartment comes with a parking space. And I've noticed lately an appetite for houses, actually, townhouses. So that, that actually a, a really good one for people who actually do want not just a, an apartment, but want a, a, a larger property, say. Yeah, it's, it's something we're, we're looking into more and more. Obviously, with, mm. with houses, it's, it's freehold. Um, certain nationalities in certain countries of the world, it, it's, a, it's yeah. a very big thing to, to own a freehold property. So, of course, yeah, we'd love to tap into that market. And, of course, we'll be talking to you more about some of the housing projects we are working on. That was a good lead in, wasn't it? It was. So if we're looking at the sizes, which is the middle column um, to the bottom of the screen, these aren't little micro apartments where, again, we've discussed this, Chris, before, where tenants are pretty transient. They come in, they outgrow them quite quickly uh, and then need to move on and find something bigger. You can see even the studio apartments start with a four, 417 to 463. That's a big apartment for a studio. A lot of the studios are sub 300 nationwide. Uh, square feet so 417 to 463 is a great size one bedrooms uh, 446 up to a whopper 702 there's only a couple of them in the block but they are very big apartments potentially they might be better for bno or owner of your apart apartments so we will see uh, when we start getting more and more viewings when we get more site access two beds starting from 640 again up to a very large 924 and there are a few three bed apartments within the development as well on the top floor. So these ones are their premier. You've got large balconies, really nice finish to the marble worktops and kitchens, et cetera. So what I'd advise everyone to do after this, of course, we'll be sending out everything to the teams is really have a look at the floor plans, start studying the floor plans, use the API uh, account managers uh, for any calls and assistance you need to really get your head around them. But it's, it's a great development that we think is going to sell out quite quickly. 
Yeah, it looks good. It's a good, good price range as well, to be honest. It's a good price range. There's a good diversity within the availability list. You can see an example floor plan for a one bed just on the previous screen there. There's no wasted space. You know, you come straight through the front door. There's not an inner hallway which carves off a lot of the, the space. Mm. The building's been um, constructed in a way with internal fire systems and sprinkler systems that you don't need an internal hallway, which is sometimes a prerequisite for fire safety. So this one is meeting all the standards for EWS1. Um, so you'll come straight into a really nice big lounge. So it's a nice big feel to it. Big double bedroom, fitted wardrobes and a full bathroom with a shower and bath. So it's again, if you're looking at the square footage and the sort of customer we're going to be looking for that, 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 that wants something in a nice area that wants to feel that they've got a nice place to live, they'll stay long term, the tenants. Yeah, that looks very neat. So the next slide, Deptford, it's a bit of a change, isn't it? That's more your part of the world, isn't it? It is. It is. And it's just, we've been looking we've been looking for something in, in, in sort of zone two London, very close to the action of, of, of the business hubs and, and, and landmarks and the Thames, et cetera. But you've just got to be looking at pricing as well to make to find something attractive that's that's well built, well positioned um, and, and, and positioned at the, at the right price for mortgageability and a healthy yield. So as, as Lewis has said before, we can't just take on any project. We, we study these closely to look at the numbers. So. This one has ticked the boxes for capital growth and for rental income. Um, we've been to the site, met the developers. We've had a good look around all the apartments. It's a, it's a really, really nicely done development. It looks good. I like a market. Lewis, do you want to roll through some Deptford stats? Yes, absolutely. So like I said at the start of the call, um, you know, Deptford is a, is a new area for us. So credit goes to Ross and his team. You know, who are doing the research and the analysis and to, to where is up and coming and you know, the investment opportunities rather than stick to the previous area that we've done in the past. We're now looking further afield at, you know, more opportunities. Uh, and I think it really proves the diversification that we offer. You know, so it's not just a, a one trip pony. We don't just focus on the North or the Midlands. We are venturing further afield to really offer, um, you know, a diverse offering to, to all investors and clients. Um, Deptford, I think, is, is probably fair to say from a location perspective, you know, when we, we speak about development and, you know, we mentioned Solihull and the connectivity, you know, Deptford is, um, it, it's an ideal location really for, for a young couple, um, other creative types. It's very similar to how Shoreditch uh, was and, and still is. Um, you know, young couples and creative types that are, um, as well as city professionals, actually, um, due to its location, it's very close to Canary Wharf and the city. You know, when we when we think about Canary Wharf and, you know, the city, we think about bankers, we think about lawyers, you know, HSBC, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of New York Mellon. All of these big corporate firms are there. You know, they've all got thousands of employees. Um, so, you know, what a perfect location to be, being 15 minutes on a, uh, on a train into Canary Wharf. You know, when we look at location, uh, when we look at development, we always look at location, location, location. I'd say the cliche it may sound, but it is an overall driver. Um, you know, Deptford, from a connectivity hotspot, that's probably what's going to drive the overall growth there as well as the regeneration. Um, from a, an education perspective, you know, you've got a number of nursery, primary schools, secondary schools, but I think what it's probably most famous for from its education is um, Goldsmith University of London, you know, the musical, the arts, the theatre side of things. You know, Deptford is extremely well known. Um, you know, when we're looking at the, the economic growth, you can see the stat there, there's four and a half thousand new jobs that are being created in digital innovation. Again, when we talk about basic economics and fiscal policies, you know, when we've got co uh, corporates that are relocating, or when we've got uh, an increase in jobs that are being created, that naturally creates a demand, okay? And, you know, I say it before and I say it again, you know, when we refer to basic economics, forgetting that to profit and purely looking at an investment, when demand outstrips supply, the price can only go one way, okay? That then leads me on nicely to my next stat in that, um, 648 percent increase in property prices since 1995. Okay, so with all the regeneration that's starting to happen, with all the increase in in jobs and the companies that are being based in and around the Deptford area, 
it's not adding to the economic growth, it's added a demand to an undersupplied market. Um, and then you can look at the, the estimated price growth, you know, over the next five years, um, you know, is actually increased as well. You know, start of the year, London, the surrounding areas, um, we're looking around 12, 13%. Vice stats have now come out to say over the next five years, we're now looking at around 18% which again to the south is extremely attractive, not only getting good appreciation, but with that becomes strong yield as well. Um, as always, we look at areas that are benefiting from high student population. Um, and you know, we mentioned from Birmingham and Solly when we look at student retention. So where students are remaining, London's one of the highest um, cities in the UK that retains its students. I'm sure, Chris, you've had a few friends that have gone to university in London and stayed there once they've graduated. I know I do. Um, you know, it, it's I, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't got any friends. I certainly haven't got any friends that went to university. But good chance. Good, good. Good idea. I tell you what, though, looking at that stat, I arrived in Dubai in 1995. That's how long I've been here. 648 percent increase. That that puts it in perspective. That's an amazing growth for London, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know that that's only going to continue, like I said, with an upward trajectory, um, you know, 18% forecast over the next five years. Um, so, when, you know, when we talk about students, we talk about the retention rate again, like we mentioned with Birmingham and Solihull, where are these students going to live? Okay. I know my friends who went to university, they want they've graduated, they didn't have enough money to go and put down as a deposit to buy a house. You know, a lot of students come out of university with a slightly bit of debt probably some sore organs from all the alcohol they've drank over the three, four years they were there, um, but they certainly don't have the deposit to, to put down and purchase that property they want. That naturally adds a demand, okay? People are needing somewhere to rent, and it's not necessarily they're going to be renting the developments that we offer, but it creates a ripple effect. They're going to be renting somewhere, which will drive other people out of where they were, who are then looking for nicer places. You know, if we're looking at, um, you know, the average... Uh, salary in the UK is getting a two and a half percent increase um, year on year. You know, people look at two and a half percent and go, "Well, do you know what? I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to have somewhere slightly nicer than where I was renting last year." Naturally, we're creating a ripple effect, which only adds a demand to an already undersupplied market. Um, what I'll do now is I'll go onto the development and the maps. Um, Ross will be able to talk you through the development as, as a whole. Um, this is a completed development, okay? Um, the majority of the units are already tenanted. So someone looking from an investment perspective, you've got a tenant in there already, which means you've got a guaranteed income coming in from day one, um, which is proven extremely popular with previous developments that we've done um, that I've already had tenants in. Thanks, Luke. So guys, this is the foundry. Um, in Deptford, which is south southeast London, so it's just over the Thames. Um, again, we've we've been there numerous times and had a had a, a good look around. You're in the borough of Lewisham, so you're you've got a neighbour to the right hand side, which is Greenwich, which I think everyone on the call should have heard of. Very very beautiful part of the world, a lovely part of London is Greenwich. Um, and with Deptford, you're you're sharing these neighbours, and as Lewis said rightly, you're across the Thames from the Isle of Dogs and Canary Wharf, home to a huge amount of banks and 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 and, and big businesses and high earning uh, potential tenants, uh, but then again, you're only seven minutes on the train from London Bridge, which is where the Shard is. So, when we're talking about price, you're 15 minutes away from Canary Wharf and seven minutes away from the Shard. You won't be able to buy a one bedroom for 425,000 in either of those places. So, to be that close and accessible to the key parts of London. Um, at these sort of prices and it's a ready product is, is, a, is already ticking boxes. So when we start running through things like mortgageability, it's got a 999 year lease, which is essentially a freehold. So a lot of clients that are on the fence about um, leasehold against freehold, a 999 year lease is essentially virtual freehold. 0.1% um, again on the ground rent. Um, we've already got mortgages through on this. Uh, a lot of the lenders already we've spoken to said, yeah, absolutely fine. We know the development and we know the developer. Um, on to the developer, um, a lot of three of the partners within the business, um, it's Anthology that have developed the sites of the foundry, which are part of the Life Story group. Um, a huge amount of inventory already delivered. Over a thousand units have been delivered. So they're a powerful developer. 
Um, three of the partners are ex Barclay Homes. So I, I don't know if everyone's familiar with Barclay Homes. Very high quality, um, well thought out master plans, good use of materials, good use of space, um, lots of communal areas, internal gardens. There's a coffee shop in one of the buildings as well for residents. It's gated. It's just a nice feel to the to the project. And of course, it's been completed to a high standard. So we've been there. It's ready. The quality is exactly as we're showing you on the images now. High quality kitchens, Siemens appliances, um, the floors themselves, the carpets, everything's been done to a high standard. And you, you can feel it when you're there, even floor to ceiling glass and balconies on every apartment. So there's a, we still have views available onto the courtyard. And as Lewis rightly said, we've got a number of the units already let. So the, the developer had a huge demand of tenants. Um, so they've just taken the tenants in. So we've got income generating apartments in zone two London, built to a higher standard. And there's prices from 425. So there's, there's really, really uh, a lot to go out here for a London product. Next one, please, Lou. Now, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, we love a map. You can see the anthology logo for the foundry. Uh, you're only a couple of minutes away from Deptford Station, but you can see proximity to the Thames is literally a few minutes walk and you'd be over by the River Thames and enjoying the, the views across the banks. To the right-hand side of the picture is Greenwich. And then you can see the right-hand side of the image where the towers are. That is straight over the water into Canary Wharf and the Isle of Dogs. And over to the left, where we can see the sign for London Bridge, only seven minutes away, you should be able to make it out on the screen there. That is the shard pointing in the air. So again, you're minutes away from some key landmarks and some of the most expensive parts to live in London. Um, and you're able to be on the ladder for an affordable price. So as we've, we've gone over with the regeneration of the area, there's a huge amount into the billions being spent on this side of the water. And it's not something that's an idea that's about to happen. This has already been happening over the last five to 10 years. So as you drive around the area of Greenwich and the Lewisham Borough, and of course, Deptford, you can already see a massive change in the shops, the retail, the cafeterias, the lifestyle things that tenants are gonna to wanna to be drawn to, to stay long-term in an area. And of course, connectivity to be able to go and work in the key locations of London and over towards Canary Wharf. It's easily accessible. It's not something that's an hour journey. You're talking about under 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes to be over to Canary Wharf, including the walk to the station. And including the walk to the station, you can be over in London Bridge in under 10 minutes. So a very, very key location. It's amazing what's going on in London, isn't it, really? And you to find these pockets, because let's face it, years ago, Notting Hill um, was not a place you wanted to go. But now, I don't know what the price per square foot is there, but these little areas of London unknown and then regenerated and really you're making money out of somebody else spending the money like uh, the mayor of london um so yeah it's a it's a, it's a it's, really it's interesting a area isn't it? behind very them. historical and, and even the zoning and the planning permission they're giving things are being built in the right way so it's not just all higgledy higgledy piggledy and just buildings going everywhere and blocking views of the thames and it's it's been zoned nicely like even greenwich when you drive through from Greenwich into Deptford, you can see from old to new, you can see the Maritime Museum, you can see the famous landmark marks of Greenwich and all the green open spaces and parks. And then you can come into Deptford and see where they've enabled all the new construction to go to sort of complement it, old to new. Um, again, a map on screen, give you a, a bit more of a zoomed out version. If you just wiggle your mouse around Lewis on the anthology logo so the, the guys can see where we are, you can see proximity to the Thames and all of the London landmarks. Again, we're not talking about an area that no one's familiar with. Hopefully, everyone is familiar with London. The big green area to the right-hand side is, of course, Greenwich. But you can see the key, the key landmarks, even slightly further afield, universities um, and certain pockets up towards the, the, the north, south, east and west. But just looking along the Thames, which is what essentially is going to be your neighbourhood, you're in great, great hands there for 425000 as an entry price. We've looked at so many products in Zone 2 London, and a lot of them are starting with sixes and sevens, Chris. I mean, I know you mentioned there uh, Notting Hill, but if you're looking around Notting Hill and, 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 and Primrose Hill, a mid-terrace three-bed house can cost you up, upwards of two and a half million. Yeah, I've got a few. Um, but yes, <laughs> and, and these will be, uh, that's what's going to happen to this area. It, it is, I just, one, I do love a good map, and I do love London, so yeah, it's... Um, and it's interesting, isn't it? Over the years that we've been working together, 
you've been mostly up north, and then you've had some um, uh, into the west end of the west side of London, which I, I remember went very, very well. Um, you certainly got a nose of sniffing out some good locations, I must say. It's the location and the developer as well. So we need to know what we, we do a lot of research and due diligence on developers, what they've built before, what the funding vehicle is in place, etc. So we, we, we really, really go through the mill with a lot of the developers. We've got a huge stress test our side before we're, uh, we're launching products. But again, with this one, we know the developers, their background, and of course this product's complete. So there's no developer risk, um, no real dip required. You'll go straight to mortgage on this product. Yeah. So it's a yeah. simultaneous exchange and completion. So a very- Which a lot very of people are looking for right now, actually. A lot of clients are looking for something that's completed and ready and, and they don't want to wait a, a year. So, a lot yeah. of clients should just be looking at this as a very, very nice part of London affordable London or a great step on the ladder into an area that can only go one way to meet the prices of its neighbours um, and going straight to mortgage. So it's a risk, a risk free as such as, a, as an asset purchase. And yeah. if you're looking at the pull of where prices are going to go, it can only, as Lewis said, it can only go up. And it's fools and horses country. Well, don't say that, Chris. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they weren't that close to the Thames. <laughs> right. Oh, well, that's what you want, prices. Here we go. So, well, let, well, prices is prices are there. You can see the prices, and I think they're very good. But if you, again, look at the centre column, which shows the value in the prices, look at the size range. One-bedroom apartments, floor-to-ceiling glass with balconies, availability mm. of apartments looking into the courtyards, gardens, which have got fountains, meeting areas. There's some, as I said, there's a coffee shop. There's creative spaces where residents can... Uh, do some some yeah creative and crafts they have all these things available so it's a, it's a really nice spot there but look at the unit sizes for retaining long-term tenants one bedroom starting from 537 up to 602 that's a large apartment two beds starting at 750 up to 950 and of course there is some three beds left which are up and over a thousand square feet but i think if we look at two bedroom apartments is, is a key point to look at i know we've gone over the entry level into one bedrooms but 550,000 for a 750 square foot apartment, uh, floor to ceiling glass completed to a high spec, that close to all the London uh, amenities, facilities and employers. I don't think there's many competitors out there that we're gonna be faced up against. I think it's a really, really good opportunity for everyone involved. Yeah. And I think that, okay. that's what the tenants have been looking for, certainly since you know, the last sort of 18 months, <clears throat> everything that's happened in the pandemic, and, you know, people now working from home for long periods of time or, you know, doing three days in the office, two days at home. People have wanted that space. People haven't wanted to be cooked up in, in you know, box rooms. They want to have that space. The, the glass from floor to ceiling certainly gives that element of a little bit more freedom. And the, the fact that you also get a balcony as well where, you know, you can go out and just relax also adds to the increased um, attractivity in this development. As uh, one of your colleagues uh, used to say, um, if you can afford London, you buy London. And um, this is a great start. Well, it is. I mean, again, look, we can see the quality. I mean, we, we've got all of the availability. We won't run through full spec lists and take up everyone's time today. We'll get it all out to everyone in the fact sheets and uh, brochures. But you can see just from the layout of the apartment, large apartment, well thought out use of space, lots of floor to ceiling glass, fitted wardrobes, large bathrooms, um, uh, the kitchens again Siemens appliances as standard uh, but it's a big double bedroom and again fitted wardrobes these are the sort of things tenants especially in London are looking for large space well thought out way, well laid out balconies available you know and uh, again 425 Chris it's it's entry level and I think they're getting a very good product for the money it's basically cash isn't it really let's be honest it's what you walk around with in your back pocket oh don't say that okay <laughs> Well, that's great. You know, this this is such a great show. Every week, one o'clock, and because it's almost like a history and a geography lesson at the same time. I feel we've got Sully Hall in uh, the West in the Midlands, Birmingham, and uh, a nice session on London. So, everybody, thank you very much. Uh, you've covered all the questions that have come in um, to me, um, and thank you everybody for jumping on. See you again next week, Zoe. I'll be seeing you soon. And thanks for joining your first session. Really, really good to see you, Ross. Brilliant. Lewis, always, always good. Thanks Thank a lot you, for everybody. tuning in, guys. And on the next one, what we'll do is we'll jump jump straight into the projects and get these snappy for you. I know we've gone over a bit of the 
uh, the background of the business. It's for anyone new that's come on board just to understand the, uh, the full end-to-end -end yeah. system. So moving forward, we'll get straight into the projects and uh, and get these done for you. Yeah, um, it would be nice to have a, an update on some of your other projects. I know 55 is doing well out there, guys. Um, but yeah, that's great. And this has been recorded, so it will go out on... Um, uh, go out via Jamie, and of course, you can catch it on YouTube and the BBC. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Cheers, man. Cheers, Chris. See you. Yeah.